Welcome to Briar's CD Showcase, I'm Briar's Cisneros and welcome to episode 4 of my updated CD collection series. So in this episode, it's going to be kind of similar to episode 1 because we're going to be talking about another shelf. So like before, we're going to start here and work my way across. So it should be a lot of fun, a lot of interesting stuff here. And then in part 5, we'll talk about this whole section, which is, I know it looks kind of weird. Again, my storage system is very convoluted, but you know, it makes sense to me. So before I begin, don't forget to leave a like. Make sure you comment below what is your favorite album that you saw up here. And of course, subscribe to the channel. You know the drill. So let's get started. So in the last episode, we left off with Sad Wings of Destiny by Judas Priest. And so we're going to go and continue with Judas Priest because I do have more. So let's do this. So the first one I'll be showing is Sin After Sin. Great album. Great stuff in there. Has the, the final song, Dissonant Aggressor. It's a killer song. Very heavy. Okay, and then after that, I have Stained Class, which is probably my favorite Jews Priest album, if I'm going to be honest. But it comes close. We'll get to the second place in a bit. Okay, after that, we have Hellbent for Leather or Killing Machine. I know in the UK it was called Killing Machine. They changed it to here in the States. I think there was a school shooting around the time. Time has not changed, hasn't it? Okay, British Steel. This was actually the first Jews Priest album I heard. And this was kind of the stepping stone of what helped me get into heavy metal. Because I tried with Metallica and that didn't really go well. But I got to this, I got to this one and I was like, okay, I actually kind of like this. So this was definitely a good stepping stone for my progression. So good stuff. Then we have Point of Entry. This is a different cover. I think this is the original cover. The cover, the original cover was kind of, I think it was like an airplane or shot, it's a shot looking outside of an airplane, I think. Um, but yeah, I think I kind of like this one better. It kind of fits the vibe, I think. And this is the one that kind of goes in second place with my favorite Jews Priest album, and that's Screaming for Vengeance. Just incredible stuff then we have defenders of the faith another very strong album then we have turbo yeah not one of my favorites but you know the title track is pretty good I mean the title I'm using title track kind of loosely the, it's called turbo but the song in question I'm talking about is turbo lover close enough and then I have Painkiller. Okay, another great album. And then the last Jews Priest album I own is their latest one, which is Firepower. Very strong album. Bands sound great on this, very heavy. Yeah, love this one. I know they're making another one soon, so I'm looking forward to that one when that comes out. And we're officially done with J. And now we're gonna move on to K. So, starting off, we have Kansas. Here's the debut. Great album cover, I think. I love the historical, um, how, how you say, historical context to it. You know, it's a Civil War mural of J John Brown. Uh, very good. I mean, if you're into history, then it kind of really, it kind of scratches that itch, I guess. That's probably a horrible way of describing it, but I digress. Moving on. We have Song for America. Great follow-up. I think I like it better than the debut, but yeah, great one. Title track is phenomenal. Then we have Mask, or Mosque. Great stuff here as well. But of course, when you're talking about Kansas, you gotta talk about this one. Left Overture, classic album. Same with this one, Point of No, of no Return. And I actually, next one is Monolith. And I actually listened to this one very recently. And I actually liked it a lot better than I originally did. But yeah, this is a good album. I recommend it. And that's all the Kansas I have. But we're still in K. Um, so King, as in Carol King. We have Tapestry, um, the only Carol King album I have, and 
this is probably her one of her best known albums great album i really love this one she sounds great the music itself is very good yeah great stuff okay king crimson next i don't have a whole lot okay we have the the, the, the debut in the court of crimson king classic one one of my favorite album covers ever then i have red I do own another King Crimson album, but we'll save that for the last episode. And again, I'll explain why when we get there. Okay, my only Kinks album, and this one's Arthur or The Decline and Fall of the British Empire. This is a very good album. For a first Kinks album for me, this is actually very good. And this is a double CD pack. So you have here, here's the first disc, and you have this artwork very Monty Python-esque. And there's the second disc. So disc one is the mono, and disc two is the stereo. There's pictures here of the band. And then there's the back. Great stuff. All right, next up is Kiss. I have quite a little bit of Kiss. I don't have a lot yet, but I do plan to fix that. So I have their debut. Very good debut. We have Alive, their live album, which is again another classic live album. And then Destroyer. Yep. All right, Led Zeppelin. Now, this is going to be the only Led Zeppelin I show here, but again, like I said, I do own some more Led Zeppelin, but we'll get to those in part, I guess, seven. This is probably going to be a seven part series, I'm assuming, but we have Led Zeppelin 2 and has the little error on the back where the track listing it shows is only is for Led Zeppelin 3, which is kind of weird, but you know, you know, I'll keep it anyway. It'll serve. Okay, next. This is a band I'm sure not many people will know, but the band is called Like a Storm, and this is their latest album, Okura, or Okura. Not sure how you say it. Not sure how you say it. So this is a New Zealand band, and they're they're a rock band, but they incorporate a didgeridoo into their sound, which is pretty interesting. You definitely hear it on a lot of the songs, and I enjoy this one. Um, I definitely need to listen to it again, but based on the first listen, I quite enjoyed it quite a bit. So I think it's worth checking out if you're interested. Okay, Linkin Park. I actually do like some Linkin Park. Here's their debut, which is called Hybrid Theory. Then I have their second album, which is Mete Meteora. Which is pro this is probably my favorite Linkin Park album. Great stuff. Rest in peace, Chester Bennington. And those are the only two Linkin Park albums I own. Okay, next we have one Leonard Skinner, and that's the debut. This is another band I definitely need to get more of their albums. Definitely need to explore them more, but this is a good album regardless. Okay, we're already in the M's. So the first one is Madonna. This is my only one. This is Like a Prayer. Very good album. Very fun. I enjoyed I enjoy Bim Madonna. I like some of her stuff. Okay, Mamas and the Papas. If you can believe your if you can believe your eyes and ears. I always forget the title of that. Great stuff. Great 60s pop. Love it. And then we have a greatest hits. We have Barry Manilow. Ultimate Manilow. I mean I mean I mean I like Barry Manilow. You know, nothing wrong with having Barry Manlow in your collection. All right, next up, Amy Mann. This is her debut, uh, whatever. So this is her first solo album because she was in a, a new wave band, I think, before. Till Tuesday, I, I think that's what they were called. And this is this came out in 93. And this is a good album. I enjoy it. I, I really do like her voice. Some great alternative rock. Okay, Marillion. This place childhood. 
great 80s progressive rock. Very surprised listening to this. And this is the only other Marillion album I have, and that's Clutching at Straws. Another great album. Definitely want to get more. Okay, Bruno Mars. One of my more modern artists I have in my collection. This is unauthored, unauthored, I forgot how you say it. Unorthodox jukebox, Jesus. Yeah, this is a good one. This is probably my favorite one of his albums because you know you can you hear a lot of his influences. There's reggae. There's you, there's reggae. You have a song that very much sounds like the Police. Um, you have like seventies like R and B in here. But yeah, great stuff in here. All right, Paul McCartney, Flaming Pie. I showcased this one not too long ago. So again, good good buddy of mine, Adam from What the Gym did it recently the live stream, listened to this album for the first time, and that kind of in inspired me to get this album for myself. And yeah, it's a fantastic album, and I like the packaging on this one. So if you open it up, you get pictures, of course, of Paul and the band, and then the CDs are nicely decorated and have in these nice decorative, nice little sleeves here, which just pull up. Yeah, very cool. Even the booklet is built into the to the panels, which is really awesome. So yeah, Flaming Pie by Paul McCartney. Recommend it. All right. You recently lost this next artist, and that's Meatloaf. Here's Bad Out of Hell. Probably one of my, another one of my all-time favorite albums ever. Just incredible. His vocals are just, just out of this world, and Jim Steinman's lyrics, like... There's a bit of humor to them, a lot of irony, but again, very well crafted song. So again, rest in peace to both Meatloaf and Jim Steinman. Okay, I also have Bad Attitude. This is a good album. I know not many people really paid attention to Meatloaf during this period, but I think he still put out some good songs here and there throughout. So it's, this, I recommend this one. Um, I also have Bad Out of Hell 2, the comeback album. Yep, great one. And the last album I have is actually his final one, and that's Braver Than We Are. And yeah, his vocals aren't don't sound what they used to. It's very hit or miss throughout this one, but you know, Jim Steinman wrote the lyrics to these songs, so you definitely feel that. Probably the best song on here is Going All the Way, a song in six movements, which features Ellen Foley and Carla DeVito. Which of course were part of Meatloaf's like backing band at the time and back in the day. So again, it's not his best album, but I think it's worth having. And then last, I have a Meatloaf is his very crappy greatest hits. Do not get this one. This one sucks. The track listing is awful, and has a very bad live. Has a couple like bad live renditions of songs on here. Don't get this one. All right, rant over. Now let's go on to Megadeth. Here I have Peace Cells, but who's buying? This was my first Megadeth album. Great stuff. Then I have Rust in Peace, another fantastic album. Very heavy, it's thrash metal as finest. Then we have Countdown to Extinction. And then the last one I own is Dystopia, which is currently their latest album, but I know they're coming out with a new album later this year. So I might probably buy that at some point. Okay, so when we talk about Megadeth, of course, we've got to talk about Metallica. So they're up next. So we have Kill Them All. Nice debut. Then we have Ride the Lightning, which is probably my favorite Metallica album, if I'm going to be honest. The, not taking away from this one, Master of Puppets, which is, all, just, which is also getting kind of a resurgence because of its appearance on Stranger Things, similar with Kate Bush. Yeah, it's a fantastic album. I didn't appreciate it when I first got it, but now I absolutely love this one, so great stuff here. Then we have the Black Album, or just Metallica. Yeah, I like this one. So there are some great songs here. All right, so next up we have Michael. We have George Michael with his first solo album, which is Faith. Pretty good. I like it. 
Now I now this is technically a solo project, but it's called the Michael Schenker Group. So I, it's a it's a band. Why not? So Michael Schenker Group with Assault Attack. This is a great album. Great heavy eighties heavy eighties eighties rock eighties metal whatever you want to call it. And you have Graham Bonnet on vocals, which he sounds amazing on. This is probably the best album he ever sung on. And you know, the guitar work by Michael Schenker is incredible. So if you've not heard this one, I recommend you check this out. It's phenomenal. Okay, and then from here we go to Midnight Oil. This one's called 10987654321. That's a mouthful, but music is great here. As was this, as with this one, which is their probably their most fit, well known album, Diesels and Dust. As beds are burning, I like that song, but all the other songs are just as good, in my opinion. Okay, this next one, uh, I'm not a fan of this one, but I kind of only have it just because I guess for historical purposes, we have Millie Vanilli, "Girl, You Know It's True," and we know that how bullshit that is. Sorry for swearing, but as you know, this these two got con got into a very big controversy over the fact they did not sing on any of the songs on this particular album because um, they were just limp syncing during the live shows. Um, but I think this is, the, I believe, this is the only album where they had like other people sing the songs. I think in the next album, they did try to sing their sing their own songs. I'm not sure how successful that was, but yeah, we, but we know how the story goes. So again, I, I, I don't, I'm not a fan of the music on here, but I, I kind of just have it just why, just because. Moving on. Now let's get to some real good music. So we have Joni Mitchell, one of my favorite female artists ever. Here is Blue, first one I got and hooked me right away. Just a just a, such an emotional album. Amazing. Then we have Court and Spark. So far, this is my favorite one. I mean, musically, it's off the chain. Great stuff. She sounds amazing. Then we have Hygiera. This is kind of a slower album, but I think the more I listen to it, I grow to appreciate it more and more. So I, I recommend it. And the last one I have is Turbulent Indigo. Very somber album, but still very good. Yeah, Joni is another one of those artists I definitely need to buy more albums. Yeah, because I know she has a ton. But you know, one day. So now let's go to another greatest hits. We have Eddie Money. Again, another one, rest in peace. Um, he made a lot of good songs, a lot of good hit singles. I dig this one. I think this is pretty much all I'll, I'll need of him, but you know, if you have any suggestions, of course, let me know in the comments. Okay, another greatest hits. We got the monkeys. Eh, this is not a good one. I mean, it is good. It has some of the songs you want to hear, but you know, sound quality wise, it's not that great. I got this at a thrift store, so why not? You know, I have a whole, I have like a, a little mini box set with their first five albums, and that's very good. So, you know. This is fine. All right, Montrose. This is their debut. And I believe over here on the side, that's Sammy Hagar. This is the first, this kind of the first big band he was in that got noticed. This is a good one. And you have, um, forgot, who's, forgot who the person is. Um, this is it Joey? Ronnie Montrose. That's it. So it's Ronnie Montrose. His guitar work on this album is very, very good. Awesome stuff here. Then we go on to the Moody Blues. I have three albums by them, but I've been very impressed with what I've heard. We have Days of Futures Past. Then from there we have the In Search of the In Search of the Lost Chord. And then we have on the threshold of a dream. Yeah, definitely becoming a big Moody Blues fan. Definitely want to get more of that. As with this band as well, we have Mott the Hoople with Just Mott. Yep, that's, that's it, it's Just Mott. Yeah, 
I didn't know what to expect, but holy crap, a lot of great songs on here. I mean, I love the vocals on here, and musically, it just sounds amazing. So yeah, I definitely want to get more at some point. Okay, we're almost done here. I think, yeah, this is the last of the M's. We have Mr. Big, Lean Into It. I do, I do like the album cover, though, because I'm a train guy. I like trains, as you can see right there. But yeah, has this pretty cool shot of this train wreck. So, yeah, who doesn't like a good train wreck? But <clears throat> regardless, um, this is kind of like the late 80s hair metal. You know, at this point, hair metal was just kind of starting to die out. So this is kind of like the last gasp of it before going to the 90s. But I think this is pretty good still. Um, I don't hate it, but I don't love it. I don't know. I don't know. It hasn't really clicked with me yet, but maybe one day I'll, it'll finally click. Um, so now we're just going to start the ends and then we'll, again, we're just going to finish when we get here. So next up we have Nazareth, my only album of theirs, Hair of the Dog. Great 70s hard rock. Very, a lot of good riffs on that one. All right, we have my only Mike Nesmith solo album. So this is The Prison. Again, I've talked about this one before, and my God, I grow, I grow to love this album more I, the more I listen to it. It's just, I mean, Mike's vocals on here are just, just incredible. Um, a lot of great melodies throughout. So yeah, if you not if you're not familiar with Mike Nesmith's solo albums, then I really suggest you check this one out. Yeah, great stuff. I know he died recently as well. Losing a lot of these legends here. Okay, Stevie Nicks. We have her first solo album, Belladonna. Very good. Then I have this one, The Other Side of, of the Mirror. This one's okay. Yeah, it's just okay. And to finish this out, we're going to be talking about Nightwish, great Finnish symphonic metal band. Here we have Oceanborn. Then we have Century Child. And lastly, Once. This is the first one I bought. And yeah. Yeah, I, I'm a big night. I'm, I guess I'm, I, I would consider myself a Nightwish fan. Again, I don't own all their albums. These, those are the only three I have, but I've always enjoyed all the ones I've heard. So yeah, great stuff in that one. If you like symphonic metal, then that's a band for you. And that will do it for part four. So again, if you enjoyed this, then please give it a like. Comment below what is your favorite album in this and throughout this throughout this video. And I'll see you in part five. So thank you for, again for watching. I'll see you then. Bye for now.